Well, welcome to the Keto Podcast, Dr. Georgia Eer. Um, we are here at the VGBC Symposium in Houten in Netherlands. Uh, it's a symposium all about health and nutrition. And uh, well, thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. Um, well, first, let's start with you. Uh, in my eyes, you are world famous, and I'm really thrilled <laughs> to have you here today and to be talking to you. Uh, but for the listeners and the viewers uh, that don't know you very well yet, could you tell us a bit more about yourself? Sure. So I'm. Uh, very, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. It's really nice to be here, and this is my first time in in the Netherlands. So, I'm, and it's just a beautiful place, and I'm happy to be at the conference. So, uh, I'm a psychiatrist, and mm -hmm. I've been a psychiatrist for more than 20 years, and for more than the past 10 years, I've been uh, focusing almost exclusively on nutrition, nutritional and metabolic interventions for psychiatric disorders, in addition to medications and psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I use primarily nutrition-based uh, um, strategies in my practice, and the cornerstone of my work really is the, the ketogenic diet. Yeah. And um, uh, how did you discover the effects of nutrition on, on mental health? Did you start with ketogenic diet, or? No. So that that's very interesting. Uh, well, I I think like so many of us, I discovered these different ways of approaching health conditions through my own health issues. I think a lot of us and a lot of us clinicians who, who, uh, who, who discover these strategies, often it's because we're trying to help ourselves first. Yeah. So you know, I certainly wasn't trained in nutrition. We didn't, uh, in medical school, four years of medical school, we didn't, I think we maybe had three hours of nutrition education, yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of it incorrect. And, and then four years of psychiatry residency training we didn't speak about food once, not even when we were talking about people with eating disorders. So yeah. um, we thought about psychiatric problems as being psychological, so stress and trauma and childhood uh, issues, and partly biological, but the biology of it we were taught was about the chemical imbalances in the brain. So we were taught to use psychotherapy for the psychological pieces and we were taught to use medications for the biological pieces, but we never yeah. stopped to ask ourselves what is causing the chemical imbalances in the first place. So that's, um, and I never thought about it myself. I never thought about the connection between food and the brain until I had my own, this is what you're asking, my own yeah. uh, health issues came up in my early 40s. I think a lot of people will identify with this, you know, things like chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and migraines and irritable bowel syndrome and all kinds of things. I just felt like I was getting older and nothing was working properly anymore. Mm -hmm. So, and this was true for a lot of my patients too, and I didn't know how to help them either. So, you know, I went to lots of very smart, caring doctors and specialists and had lots of tests and everybody said, everything looks fine. There's nothing wrong, but of course something was wrong. And uh, so I just, I started experimenting with my diet because I didn't know what else to do. And just by trial and error, because this was a long time ago, this was probably 2009 or so, mm -hmm. um, I had never heard of paleo diets, I'd never heard of the ketogenic diet, <laughs> um, but through trial and error, uh, within about six months, I was able to, to reverse all of those problems that I had, and more. I, I didn't even realize, I wasn't even trying to improve my mental health. My mental health seemed fine to me. Yeah. But everything was better. You know, my mood was better. My energy was better. My concentration was better. And I thought this diet, which I'll, was really upside down from what we're told to eat. Yeah. You know, it was lower in fiber. It was higher in cholesterol. Higher in meat and fat and lower in plant foods. Uh, that diet was the diet that that reversed all of these issues for me. And I, I, um, I really thought that there must be something to this because it also seemed to be better for my brain. And I thought, well, if this is better for my brain, could it be better for my patients? Yeah. So that's when I started studying nutrition because I was not going to recommend this crazy diet, this upside down <laughs> diet to patients unless I, because I thought, I thought the diet was potentially dangerous. Everything I had learned yeah. about nutrition, <laughs> everything I ever heard suggested that this diet was going to, to kill me. So I, I, would do, I did not want to recommend this to patients until I learned more about nutrition. And as I'm sure you know, <laughs> when you start studying nutrition, really looking at the papers and the science, there's no support for most of the information that we have. No. It's really um, very surprising. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's really amazing that um, there's nothing, not a lot any, uh, to, to be found about this. But um, can, um, what kind of a diet would you would you recommend or prescribe to your to your uh, patients nowadays? Is that strictly uh, paleo, ketogenic, carnivore? <laughs> so uh, it's very individualized. It depends on what what the person is interested in doing, what their particular situation is, what their goals are, yeah. and the, the, the many different factors. But by and large, uh, the, the types of diets that I use in my practice and that people can choose from and that we can work with, uh, I always, uh, I, I don't go beyond paleo. So paleo is the broadest diet that I would recommend. Yeah. That's the, I always say to people, draw the line at paleo. Beyond that, there's only danger. Yeah. Uh, grains, legumes, processed foods, um, those are all, uh, should be, all of us should avoid those. Yeah. So a paleo diet is your outer limit, but for, for quite a few people, it's still going to contain too much carbohydrate mm -hmm. because we, so many of us now have a damaged, damaged metabolism, insulin resistance. And so there's going to be too much carbohydrate even in things like fruits and vegetables uh, to, be, uh, to keep our blood sugar and insulin levels in good control. So paleo is the outer limit. And then I often will, in many, many cases, uh, recommend the ketogenic diet, which is simply a very, very low carbohydrate version low carbohydrate, yeah. higher fat version of a paleo yeah. diet. I agree, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then for some people even, uh, just just breaking the diet, just stripping the diet down to its core elements, which is really just animal foods, non-dairy animal foods, which is what, what I like to recommend. Yeah. So, you know, meat and seafood and poultry and eggs, and um, so a extremely low carbohydrate, high fat diet uh, based on animal foods, and that's, that's very nice for people who have a lot of food sensitivities or gut damage or autoimmune conditions or, or people who are just really frustrated and can't figure out what the dietary issue might be. It's a very simple and lovely starting point. <laughs> yeah. And for, for which uh, mental conditions would you uh, recommend this? Uh, you mean the carnivore diet in particular? Yeah, or but, um, the, at, at levels. <laughs> and what kind of patients would you start on a paleo diet uh, and what's the next okay, level? Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, so one of the reasons, that, as we're talking, it's occurring to me um, that I, I, I should mention that I'm, I'm writing a book that will be coming out in January. And the reason I mention that is not because of the book. The reason I mention is because in the book there will be these three diets and I walk people through, I'm going to talk about yeah. this now, walk people through where to begin and how you know where to start and, and what might be right for you. So, and, and, and I do the same thing in the book as I'm going to tell you, which is I start everybody. Um, I have learned over the years to start everybody, uh, especially if they're eating a you know, kind of a standard diet with lots and lots of carbohydrate mm -hmm. in it, especially lots of refined carbohydrate in it. I, I don't usually switch people automatically to a ketogenic diet, even if I think that that's what's going to be best for them. I always start everybody with a with a kind of a lower, kind of moderate carbohydrate paleo diet so that you can ease into a ketogenic diet. And it's much more comfortable. It gives people a chance to practice some better eating habits and, yeah. you know, how, what will they do without bread? You know, practice those kinds of things. And then, uh, you know, assuming that they're not getting the benefits that they're hoping for, or if their blood sugar is still running too high, um, still having mental health symptoms, then uh, then we will switch to a ketogenic version of that diet gradually over a number of weeks. Yeah. And uh, and then if that is not is not useful enough, then we can go to carnivore, uh, or some people even come to me and say they want to go directly to carnivore. So again, we usually will start with a paleo diet and then yeah. move to carnivore. So it really. Um, it's very flexible, but if if someone's listening that I don't know and I haven't been able to talk to them and I don't know what medications they're taking or what their health issues are, what their goals are, I would say that it's very safe for everybody to start with kind of a moderate carbohydrate paleo diet and then gradually move from there. And if you're if you are taking medications or have any serious health conditions or serious psychiatric symptoms, then you absolutely want to work with yeah. work with professional to to make sure that it's safe for you to transition because the transition to a ketogenic diet can be uncomfortable and it can 
in some cases, although not most, but in some cases, you can feel worse before you feel better. Yeah. So it's really important to, to work with somebody who, who understands uh, ketogenic diets. <laughs> yes, because this, that was going to be one of my questions. Um, I also read a book uh, of Dr. Chris Palmer. And yes, he, yes, he yes. warns about um, uh, when people have uh, um, uh, psychiatric illnesses mm -hmm. uh, and they're on medications and they start uh, a ketogenic diet um, and they, um, they, um, they improve at first and they can, they can have a relapse or, uh, or, or they start eating more carbs again and they have, like, like fall back to their old state and they can, they can be worse even than before. Um, and that has me worried a little bit uh, when, when people start for themselves because I get a lot of questions from people who say, well, uh, one of my family members is depressed or has uh, sky, uh, schizophrenia yeah. um, or some other very serious uh, psychiatric um, um, condition. Right. Um, should they start on a ketogenic diet? And what, what would you advise these people? Well, it's very difficult to give a blank, blanket advice yeah. for that because everybody is in a little bit different situation. Um, so, but if, the, if there's somebody listening who is dealing with a serious mental health issue, particularly something like bipolar disorder or schizophrenia or people who have any serious psychiatric symptoms where, you know, there's, uh, even if it's been a long time ago, uh, history of self-injury uh, or, or suicidal thinking um, mm -hmm. or, or manic episodes, anything serious, um, th those types of situations, it's especially important that if you'd like to try a ketogenic diet, which may be a very, very good idea, that, that, um, that, you, that you work with somebody that, that, uh, that knows how to, how to use these diets. And so, uh, one of the things I can recommend is, um, well, two things I can recommend. Mm -hmm. So one thing is there's a website um, called Metabolic Mind, mm -hmm. and that website has a lot of free information, informational videos, education for the general public about how ketogenic diets work for mental health, what kinds of things to watch out for. Um, and so I highly recommend those are all, it's all free information uh, supported by the Bazooki Brain Research yeah. Fund. Mm -hmm. So. And, and new information is being posted on that site all the time. The other thing I can recommend is uh, I created a, a, an international database, a searchable clinician directory, mm -hmm. so where people can look for uh, practitioners of all different kinds. So therapists, dietitians, nutrition therapists, coaches, uh, psychiatrists, uh, internal medicine specialists, um, uh, who specialize in and, and usually have special knowledge and training in and experience with using ketogenic diets specifically for mental health conditions. So that directory is on my website, which is diagnosisdiet.com. Mm -hmm. And if you just, there's a, it's totally free. It's free for practitioners to list themselves there okay. because I want everybody to be, able to, to be able to find each other. It's very difficult still to find practitioners yes. who feel comfortable doing this. So. Um, so I think this is meant to be a free resource for the public. And so it's free to list and it's also free to search. Uh, and you can search by location and, and type of practitioner. You can look for prescribers or non-prescribers or even create a team yeah. you know, to, to help you. So yeah. um, I, I don't want people to feel like they have to do this alone and with a lot of guesswork because it, it can be tricky to navigate at first. Yeah. And I had a look at the, the directory. And I found only one name in the Netherlands and none oh. in Belgium. So, oh. uh, and I see you also give a uh, training. Yes, yes, yes. So that that would be a great place to start for for any uh, healthcare uh, practitioner uh, or professional in the Netherlands or Belgium or even anywhere in the world, of course, um, to, to to start working with uh, the ketogenic or paleo uh, or carnivore diet. Yes, uh, thank you for mentioning that. So one of the because there are so few professionals, um, you know, I was getting so many requests every week to work directly with people who are really interested in, in metabolic treatment for their yeah. mental health, which is wonderful. I mean, that's, we want people to know about these, these, these new ways of doing things because they're so powerful. These interventions are so powerful and so effective for so many people, but there aren't enough of us doing it. So I thought, well, I can't see everybody myself and, and the few of my colleagues who do this, um, we're all full and, and have a long wait list. So I thought, well, let's train some more people. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. so uh, clinicians of any background are invited to take the course and you can either take it in a small group, uh, sort of live online training with me. I'm doing the next ones in August, so people can yeah. sign up. Or you can, uh, there's now a, an option where you can take it um, offline, where you can uh, um, just watch at your own pace. So um, that, that will hope, hopefully improve access for people, you know, and make it easier for people to find uh, 
clinicians who yeah. feel comfortable using these strategies. It would be great if there were more um, uh, healthcare professionals or, or, or psychiatric professionals or other <laughs> professionals uh, uh, to, to do this training. Because I, um, in my uh, institute, I do train um, um, healthcare professionals yes. on the ketogenic diet. Yes. Um, but I still feel a bit worried to, to tell mm -hmm. to tell them, okay, you can go and uh, help um, psychiatric patients because we, we don't have don't have any specialized expertise on the psychiatric well, medications, uh, sure. the, the disease, and everything. So it would be totally great if there were more um, doctors, uh, psychiatrists in the Netherlands and Belgium. Um, even if they don't have had a, a training about the ketogenic themselves, the ketogenic diet themselves, um, but if we could work together and if they could do the, 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 their bit and we can do our bit and have some kind of cooperation all in the interest of the patient, that would even be great. Even It would be even uh, better if they uh, do your training, of course. Um, but I was I'm really looking for this cooperation somehow. This is exactly the, yeah. the best. The if you can, the, really the best way to do this is if you can create a team of people to support you. Yeah. So, because often the psychiatrist won't have enough time uh, and sometimes not enough information to be able to, to uh, guide you through the diet all by themselves. Yeah. And they're very busy. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, they need to be paying attention to medications, they need to be paying attention to the symptoms. Um, it really helps to have uh, someone who specializes in nutrition and ketogenic diets, it really helps to have a coach, support, uh, somebody who can educate you and support you through it because changing diet is hard. And uh, even if you understand exactly how it works and why it works and why you want to do it, the information is not enough. You also need the support and, and the guidance because these behavior changes are not easy. Um, and it's easy to slip backwards. Yeah. And especially in our food environment, it's very difficult to eat a low carbohydrate diet in a high carbohydrate world. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, it takes some practice. And uh, I think it's really, really nice if you can find uh, someone in addition to your prescriber to, to work with. I think people do much better when they have that support. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. That inspires me as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, could you, um, for, for anyone listening and wondering how, how would uh, nutrition improve my mental uh, problems, <laughs> can you say something about the mechanisms or how this actually works? What, what happens when you start changing diets in your head? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, again, I never thought about the connection before. I just, it, isn't that strange? I mean, do, we, we, we think all the time about how the diet affects the body and how the diet affects our weight and our risk for heart disease and yeah. things like that. We never think about the brain, but the brain is, of course, part of the body. And uh, our metabolic health, uh, you know, our blood sugar levels, our insulin levels, inflammation, all of those things that, that are causing the rest of our body to have difficulties, of course, the brain is not an exception. Yeah. So the, the, the metabolic health goes above the neckline. And so the foods that you eat determine three things about brain health. So one is, are you nourishing the brain? Mm -hmm. which means are you getting all of your essential nutrients? So that means you need to know which foods have those nutrients because we have a lot of wrong information about which foods are most yeah. nutritious. Mm -hmm. It also needs, the second thing it needs to do is it needs to protect the brain from damaging uh, ingredients uh, that are in the, mod the modern, sort of what used to be called the standard American diet, but now we have exported it around the world. So now it's also the Dutch <laughs> diet and yeah. it's every other diet. Yeah. Um, so it needs to exclude the refined carbohydrates, things like sugar and flour and cereals and fruit juice. And it needs to exclude the vegetable oils, things like soybean oil. These, these ingredients, these are the signature ingredients of the modern unhealthy diet. It's mm. not red meat and saturated fat. We've been eating those mm. for hundreds of thousands of years. These are the new, these are the new uh, um, damaging forces. And they create inflammation in the body and brain. They create what's called oxidative stress in the body and brain. That's why we're always told to eat more antioxidants. Yeah. Because we have too much, we're unbalanced. We have too much oxidation and not enough antioxidation. Uh, so the foods you eat, we're always told eat more antioxidants. Yeah. But how often are we told eat less foods that cause oxidation yes. in the first place? Yes. So the refined carbohydrates and the vegetable oils. And the third thing that the diet needs to do is it needs to uh, energize the brain safely in a way that protects the brain metabolism for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And that means keeping your blood sugar and insulin levels in a healthy range. 
and modern diets do not do that. Yeah. So we need to be very, we need to be aware of what our blood sugars are, we need to be aware of what insulin levels are, pay attention to our metabolic health, because over time, if your blood sugar and insulin levels are running too high too often, so if you're eating the wrong foods too frequently, mm -hmm. you will over time not just damage the inside of the brain with inflammation and oxidative stress, but you will make it more difficult for the brain to access energy uh, because you'll develop insulin resistance, insulin won't be able to cross into the brain as easily, and you can't turn glucose or anything else into energy. You can't, your brain can't make energy without, uh, can't make enough energy without insulin. Yeah, so yeah. you, if you know which dietary changes to make and you know why those are important, um, then you can, you can, there's a tremendous amount of improvement you can experience even in just a few weeks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I always think there are two um, reasons to, to follow a low carb, high fat diet, not only uh, uh, to provide more nutrients, more minerals, the right fats and everything, um, but also to reduce insulin resistance, the, the, the hyperinsulinemia. Yes. But also to um, make it possible for the body to create ketones. Yes. And the ketones can go to the brain. Yes. And act as a very powerful extra energy source for the brain. That is exactly right. Yeah. So, uh, keto, so a ketogenic diet is very special because um, most other diets do not um, do not allow you to spend enough time in ketosis, and you know a lot of people think of glucose or sugar, um, blood sugar, as the best fuel source for the brain, and and that really that the brain is supposed to it really works its best if it's one hundred percent running on glucose. That is not true. Mm -hmm. So the brain is, uh, as Professor Stephen Quinane likes to say, it's a hybrid engine. So it's really designed. It can run on 100% glucose. Yes. Um, but most of us do, <laughs> and most of us do at least yeah. during the day. Mm -hmm. um, at night, some of us will run out of that. Um, will will not be able to 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 do that. Uh, we can only store a certain amount of carbohydrate in our bodies, yeah. and we'll eventually run out. Um, so uh, most of us, if we're if we're uh, eating a, a standard diet, we might go into a mild ketosis overnight, but many of us still do not. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's really what we're designed to do. We're designed to switch back and forth between burning mostly glucose for energy and then burning a mixture yeah. of glucose and ketones. So the brain uh, does need some glucose at all times, yes. but it doesn't need very much. Um, and it is designed to um, to spend uh, it, on a regular basis to spend time in this hybrid state, and, and that's yeah. because the brain needs a break from processing all of that glucose. Processing glucose one hundred percent puts a lot of stress on the brain. It, it creates a lot of inflammation and oxidative stress. Um, the brain needs to rest, and if you supply it with ketones, the ketones. Um, the ketones then allow some of those pathways that have been running full speed on glucose all day to mm. relax and the brain can spend some time healing and paying attention to other things. And, yeah. But most of us don't do that. So um, I think uh, even if, this might be a bit of a controversial <laughs> statement, but even if you don't need a ketogenic diet to, to you know, address any mm -hmm. particular health problem. Maybe you don't have a weight problem, you don't have a mental health problem, your blood sugars are normal, you're, you're one of these very rare creatures who has no metabolic health issues. Um, even, even I think everybody uh, would be wise to spend uh, time in ketosis on a regular basis yeah. to protect the brain's health over, over time. But most of us now have such damage to our metabolism that we are, we really feel best when we are in ketosis yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah, yes. Most people don't realize um, how they how they can feel um, when they are uh, um, more often in a ketogenic state. Exactly. You feel so much better, even if you don't have any health issues or weight issues. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Um, if there's anybody now uh, um, that's listening and uh, that's inspired by by what you're just uh, explaining to us. What would be the, the best way to start? I think really the best way to start is to learn more about it. And, there, and, and I think one of the best resources for that uh, is the Metabolic Mind website mm -hmm. because it's got lots of user-friendly uh, videos and other types of information all free for everybody. Um, they can also, you're welcome to go to my website, also all free information there, lots of free information about how food works and 
some surprising information about food and nutrition and, mm -hmm. and, and the brain and lots of free articles there, uh, information about the training and, and, and also the, the clinician directory. Um, and so I think learn, learning, watching videos, especially of people who have solved their own mental health problems yeah. can be really inspiring. Um, and we've got quite a few of those on the Metabolic Mind site as well as um, some on my own website as well. So if, you, if you're inspired to do something like this, if you think, oh, you know, I've tried lots of medicines or I don't do well with medicines or I just want a more natural approach, um, before you try it, I think it's really important to learn more about it. And, uh, and then, as I said, um, you know, find somebody to work with. If you're going to do a ketogenic, find somebody. Ketogenic diet is not right for everybody, no. but it is safe and and worth considering for most people. Yes, most people yes. are. That's that's that's. It is what I end up recommending for most of my patients. Certainly not all. There are some exceptions, mm -hmm. and that's what the training is about. So, the training is to help clinicians understand who is a good candidate for the ketogenic diet. How do you manage the medications? Because this is a powerful metabolic intervention. It's not just any other diet. No. It's, it's, uh, it changes, fundamentally changes the way your body works yeah. and your brain works. So it changes your blood glucose levels quickly, your insulin levels quickly, you can change your blood pressure very quickly, you can change your medication yep. levels quickly. Those are all really good things, yeah. but yeah. they have to be managed uh, carefully during the first few weeks of the diet. So um, that's why anybody who's listening who's thinking about doing this for their own brain health, please learn more about it and please, you know, um, uh, work with somebody who understands those those issues so mm -hmm. that you will set yourself up for success. Yeah. Well, great. I think that's very good advice. Uh, and people who follow my podcast, they, they know where to find me and, and I'll put your uh, um, your links to, the, to your website in the, in the show notes as well. Um, are you also available on social media? Yes, uh, yes. So uh, I am on Twitter. I'm, I'm most active on Twitter. I'm also on LinkedIn and Facebook, but I, I don't use those yeah. as often, just because of time yeah. constraints. Uh, so yes, that's that's those are that's probably the easiest place to find me. Great. And can you uh, name your website one more time? Oh, sorry. It's uh, diagnosisdiet.com. Yes. <laughs> Well, I, um, I could talk to you for hours and hours. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think um, um, that's enough information for, uh, for, the, for people who uh, hear about it for the first time. Um, so I want to thank you very much. Uh, enjoy your stay in the Netherlands and enjoy today. Uh, and I think I'll be seeing you again in Switzerland soon. Yes. Oh, we're going to Keto Live. Yes. yes. And yeah. you would be there for the first time, right? Yes. Oh, I can't wait. It's yeah. a really beautiful I, I feel like a kid, a five-year-old going to Disneyland for the first time. <laughs> All my heroes are there. You're one of them, for sure. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm so glad to see you again there. It's it's really lovely for people who haven't been. And I, um, a Keto Live conference is a five-day conference all about metabolic health yes so um it's it's in, it's in the middle of the swiss Alps, so it's hard to beat that <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for having me thank you very much <laughs>